everything you do? Crazy. Thank you. Now, I, I have to ask, do you have a rubber back? Like, you, you, back? you bend back pretty yeah. crazy. <laughs> I don't know, it's just adrenaline, I guess. You can, like, go way back, and I'm just like, does she have a rubber back? <laughs> Did she, out, did she land on her head tonight? I didn't see that. I didn't see her on her head. Yeah, a lot of times she'll go all the way back and then land on her head. That's crazy. Like I said, do you have a rubber bag? <laughs> no, I haven't checked. Okay. Maybe I should get that checked out. Maybe. I might not. Alright, so tell us what's new with the band. We still have a month left of shows in Hotel, about 30 shows left. Yeah, so we're, we're not really looking wow. past that right now. It's yeah, that's like, like, we're just looking to get through this. <laughs> then uh, we have some super cool stuff coming up in May, like maybe shooting a new video. Yeah. Top yeah. secret. Top secret. So we can't say what one. I'm not going to tell you what one. <laughs> okay. And then we've got... It's our hit, Freebird. Yeah, it's one of our we're recording Megas. Skinner and Freebird. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, we've got a new album that may or may not be coming out after that. Oh boy. Brand new album. All this kind of baby stuff got me on the edge. <laughs> Produced by the awesome Sylvia Massey. She's so pretty. Sylvia Massey is amazing. If you don't know who Sylvia Massey is, she recorded the first two Tool albums. The classic oh albums by Tool. Uh, the first System of Down album. Um, she's recorded the last Johnny Cash album. Wow. Uh, right before he died, and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and Prince, and everybody, like, she's amazing. She's a Grammy winning us. producer. Us, at the top of the list. Yeah, we're super big stars. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So you want to tell us about the lyrics? Of every song? Not of every song, just <laughs> an overall view. Um, I don't know, I just write what I'm thinking. Yeah. And even when it comes to serial killers? Yeah, well, you're probably referring to Be My Friend. That song is a metaphor for interpersonal relationships okay. and, uh, and how we... Sometimes people wonder why they're so lonely when they're killing off their friends. You know, you gotta, you gotta be a good friend to have friends. And that's what that song is really about. That's awesome. So, you want to tell us about the makeup? Like, uh, it's mostly black lipstick. Just black lipstick? Stick glitter to it. Is it just fun to do? Is yeah. that why you do it? <laughs> I like to paint myself and it is always the changes depending on my mood and what I'm feeling like. Yeah. Well, let's talk about doing a little Hindu thing lately. Yeah. It's the eye. The dot. Yeah. That's cool though. Well, I used to draw a big old uh, eye on my forehead and that's the one eye. But now I have bangs. I cut my bangs off. So now I don't have as much room so I just put the dot. <laughs> That's cool. So let's talk about the show. It's you, you're like telling a story. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Just sort of just flailing around and uh, getting my point across, I guess. Just getting your point across. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a crazy tour story? Oh, man. Just last night. It was, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. We, we showed up. Uh, they told us that the doors for the show were going to open at 7 o'clock and, and then they moved it up to 6 o'clock and we were already kind of running late. So we, we got all crazy and like loaded everything in last minute and got it all set up. And it's raining. And it's raining and it's like muddy. We're all everything. super wet. And then, and it's like torrential rain. And then Florida. the power <laughs> dies in the whole building, in the whole like complex. And there's like 400 kids in this place just like in going crazy in the dark. Yeah. And <laughs> and it, power was off for what three hours? Wow! Something like that. So we just uh, people are starting to chant, you know, getting all crazy and mad, like that. We want our money back. Yeah, like, wanting, wanting a refund and all this stuff. So, uh, Kimberly. What I do is what I do is out to destroy us. Yeah, what I do hates us. <laughs> and so uh, Kimberly had this great idea to um, just give posters out to everyone. So we had a whole box of posters, and everyone in the room got a free poster. And we just had that. They had. It was kind of creepy because they had the uh, emergency lights on and they'd be like blinking and stuff. Oh, so wow. everybody, there's this like crazy room filled with all these metal heads, all angsty. It's surreal. Yeah, and, but everybody lined up and got the autographs and it was super cool. The particularly rowdy town of Jacksonville. Jacksonville, wow. Florida, you know, it's they're particularly crazy. particularly rowdy. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So do you guys have a favorite venue that you've been to? Oh, girl, this is on the top of my list. Yeah. I love the masquerade. 
Masquerade, yeah. um, Ram's Head Ram's Live. Ram's Head in Baltimore. Baltimore. It's really awesome. Um, we're we're going to be playing in uh, New York City. Oh, the Webster Hall. The Webster the Hall in New York City is one of our favorites. Yeah. Uh, the Whiskey in Hollywood. Who can't oh, play? I love the Whiskey. Yeah. yeah the the Whiskey there a Go-Go. several times now, and it's just, they're so good to us there. Yeah. The yeah. fans are great, and, and it's just know, packed every time. The right. Doors, and Zeppelin, and Van Halen, and everybody just, has played there. So. I'll just lick the walls and imagine who else has licked the walls. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So what was your influences growing up for both of you? Uh, I like, um, my very, very first favorite band was the Beach Boys. <laughs> and then um, I really, really liked the Beatles. And then after that, I liked um, Kiss a lot. And uh, I, my fourth Halloween, when I was four years old for Halloween, I dressed up as Peter Chris, the drummer for Kiss. So I, I was started early as the, uh, the makeup uh, rock and roll drummer. But um, then uh, I got into kind of like more 80s New Wave, Duran Duran, and Cyndi Lauper, and Human League, and bands like that. And uh, then I got into Metallica and Slayer and um, Iron Maiden, like in the late 80s. That was like, you know, it was all about that. That's what I really uh, learned how to play drums. That's too, awesome. was, uh, was like that thrash, late 80s thrash scene, uh, Megadeth, you know. And then I switched gears and started playing guitar. So that's where my, my drumming talent ends. I can't do anything. If it's not, if it's not like Lars or, uh, you know, um, Dave Lombardo or something, I just can't even comprehend that kind of style of drumming. So the only thing I can really do is that. So. And what about you? Uh, well, the first performance I ever saw when I was a kid was my grandpa, Bernie Jones, performing at a party. Okay. He put on this particular hat and became this character and oh. he, he, he had the whole room singing along with him and he sang songs and he played all these different instruments he busted on the piano and then pulled out a sax and had a guitar and he told stories and he did these slapstick routines and he was just amazing he, yeah. he was uh he was one of uh the members of spike jones the spike jones group and he had polka band
instrument because you can't rely on anyone in this world, especially musicians. That's so nice. you better learn to back yourself up and the show must go on whether your band shows up or not. And over the years, until I had this reliable guy, I mean, it happened to me several times. My band decided not to show up or it couldn't play the show or whatever. And I played the show anyway because I had the guitar. And so it's, it's not something I ever really, I, I mean, I, I didn't even want to play guitar in the first place. It's just that he, he told me that I should, so I did. And, and I've had to use it to back myself up a lot. And I never meant to be the like, you know, lead instrumentalist of the band either. I just nobody else would play the stuff I wanted them to play, so I had to do it myself. I wanted to change my stuff, you know. All these guys would come in and they all want wanted to, to be tapping things. solos. <laughs> so they didn't understand the concept of simplicity and and that the absence of sound is also music, you know. We I use that. So I couldn't really get that across to anybody, so I, I eventually just, just like I'll just play all the parts myself and call me a lot, so there's a bass sound to it. And I'll just, you know, he helps pull it out. Of that, so. yeah. Have you ever thought about adding a bassist to the group? Yeah, we do sometimes. We have friends play with us. Uh, in fact, a couple tours ago, pro did John play with us here at the Masquerade? Uh, I don't think John ever played with us in the Masquerade. Yeah. That goes out with us sometimes on bass. He's a goldfish. He's very cool. We can kind of change whenever we want if we feel like it. Bring a buddy out, play whatever instrument. So we're very flexible. We don't have any rules. We're not like two piece till we die or anything like that. We change it up all the time. In fact, I have a lot of songs that I wrote for a three piece or a four piece band. And if we want to tour on that stuff, we'll have a buddy come with us and play those other parts. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, it's really cold out here. So you got any last words for us? <laughs> we still have the whole, almost the whole country left to go. So if you see this, uh, come and check out our, our tour listing. Go to oneeyedoll.com and then click the tour button and you'll see all the other dates that we have left. We're traversing from New York City to Hollywood still. So we have yeah. basically the whole country left to go. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank you. Uh, so we hope our fans will support you too. All right, Ash Pop, check it out here with One Eye Doll. Later, guys. Bye.